Good morning, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ for giving us this time this morning. Uh, when I stopped on our video series before our webcam got broke, uh, we had stopped at step two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And there's many scriptures that talk about how we come to believe, but I found that the best way to, to explain how I came to believe is the best way in order to get the message I want to put across. I feel like that nobody can teach you actually how to become come to believe, but that God sows seeds in our life. God sows the seed of Jesus Christ in our lives by examples of others. In John 12, 24, Jesus said that unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it will not produce fruit. And that's exactly what Christ did. He came to this earth as a seed of God. He came here to die that we may be restored and that he would bear much fruit. And that each of us, as we die to ourselves, will bear much fruit. But in order to share my story, there's some scripture that goes with it. And it's Matthew 13, 3 through 8. And it says, And then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. And still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. And in my own personal life, that is... I can show you where that is exactly true in my life. At the age of eight or nine, I went to my grandmother's Salvation Army Church in Memphis, Tennessee. And there was an evangelist there. And I can't remember everything that happened that day, but I can remember that I became so convicted and felt so guilty that I started crying and I went up to the altar. And then... At the end of the service, he asked people to give up and give testimony. And at eight years old, I got up and I spoke that I had been washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. Now, I didn't understand any of that. And as that morning went on and I got home, I told my grandmother what happened because my grandmother was, was teaching another class. And she said, well, good. We'll just see if there's any change that comes from it. But it was at that moment that the birds of the air came and ate that seed that had been sown in my heart. I never ever thought again for many, many years what it meant to know Jesus Christ. And then it says, Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. In high school, I went to Collierville High School. I was in a group home at this time. I've been in a group home about three years, four years. I was 15 years old, and this group called Teen Challenge came to our school. And Teen Challenge was a group of recovering drug addicts and alcoholics, recovered drug addicts and alcoholics, who came to share their story through music and testimony. And that day... I went to one of them after his name was Roosevelt Brooks. I still remember that man to this day. Uh, three finger guitar player. It was a very awesome man, man of God. Love him with all my heart to this day. And he spoke with me and counseled me on what it meant to accept Christ. And I accepted Christ that day. But there again, I was in the group hall, and which was basically, you know, a place where I learned more of my what you call uh my, my manipulation skills my 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 skills the things that i felt would protect me from her others 
I was never being discipled. I was never being taught the Word of God. There wasn't really church services that went on there. So even though I was excited about Christ and excited about God and the seed was sowed there, all the cares of, of me trying to protect myself and trying to accomplish what I wanted at that time because I thought I was smarter than everybody else. Those that ran a group home, those that were counselors, those that were my teachers. And uh, all that choked out the word. And I went on running my life with drug addiction and alcoholism and chasing women. And went to Job Corps, went to the Army, got kicked out of the Army, all because I was chasing the drug. I was, I was trying to run from the pain that I experienced from childhood. And this went on until around 1995. And I've been involved with a woman for a long time, and she ran off with a married preacher. Uh, I recommitted my life to Christ again. The seed had been sown in my heart again at Coming New Life Church, and I got baptized. We, about, we needed to get married. We couldn't continue living in that lifestyle, drinking and drugging, and uh, not being married. Well, within a month, she decided she wanted to leave and be involved with this married preacher who his wife allowed. And of course, that's all another story. But I started going to church real faithfully. You know, I got involved in evangelist came by the name of, of Keith Holliday. And he actually seen the Holy Ghost working in my life and laid hands on me. And there was a transference of the Holy Spirit and uh, experience with the Spirit of God that really kind of fueled my addiction. Uh, I had never gotten that high before like I did that day. It was almost like he injected me with something. And I know today it was the Holy Ghost. But I was so concerned about finding, because the teacher received it was, if I just asked God for whatever I wanted, I would receive it. If I wanted a good wife, he'd give it to me. If I wanted the perfect job, he'd give it to me. If I wanted a bunch of money to come in the mail, all I had to do was sow a bunch of finances into the ministry. If I wanted to do car, all I had to go do was lay my hands on one and claim it in the name of Christ. And I got to worry strictly about what God could give me and not who or what God wanted. And I got called up in pride and arrogance and decided that it was everything I was doing for God was bearing no fruit, so therefore it wasn't real. So God allowed me going back out. I'd been clean for about a year, and I started smoking pot again, started drinking again, doing some cocaine, eating some acid. You know, just went right back to the vomit, and that went on for about 13 years. I ran, kept running away from God myself, moved to Folly Beach. This is how I ended up here in South Carolina. And... Because of my desire to have what I wanted, the cares of the world, the forms, choked out the fruit, choked out the word of God in my life. And this continued on. I got involved bad. I, of course, I, you know I was an opiate addict all my life. That was my drug of choice. But I got involved with crack cocaine in the last four or five years. And I became what I despised. As I used to sell pot to people and sell dope and pills, I used to see the people that come bumming from me because they'd been smoking all their money up in crack, and I'd call them crack hits and everything else. So, so God allowed me to become what I despised, kind of like uh, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. I wandered out there until I was able, till my heart had been tilled enough to be good soil. Until I came to the end of myself. And the seed was sown in August of 2008 at Faith Home. And I made a complete decision that I was ready. I was tired of that lifestyle. And because of all I'd suffered through, God had allowed all the circumstances to fill that ground in my heart where this time when the seed was sown in me, it would take root. And it's been four years now since that happened, and I'll be first to admit it's not been an easy road. It's not been, uh, you know, everything's perfect, everything's restored, because I've had to work through these steps, and, and these steps have taught me that 
I have a lot of wreckage from my past that not only affected other people, but really affected my relationship with Jesus Christ. And these things have to be brought out and confessed and dealt with. And that happens by renewing of mind, Romans 12, too. You know, be there not forward to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be acceptable, perfect, and goodwill of God. 12, Romans 12, 1, 12, 2 is to present your bodies a living sacrifice. And how do we renew our mind? And renewing our mind comes from the fact that I was willing to do what people who God set in my life instructed me to do. You know, I started reading the big book. I started understanding the steps. I started the Bible to develop a relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, with Father God, Yahweh, El Shaddai, the Almighty God, the Lord of Heaven's armies. And through this last four years of this walk and working through these steps and re realizing that it's strictly the Word of God that's been put into terms that we can really understand, sort of a process. It's not the process, it's, it's not the steps that actually get you clean and sober. It's not the steps that restore your, your relationship with God Almighty and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the steps that bring you to the realization. It's the steps that renew your mind, that you're renewing of your mind, that your heart can confess that these are what has to be done. And that's how I came to believe. And God doesn't have to show barrels of my life. I mean, because of the wreckage of my past, because of all the chaos and evil and manipulation and things I've sowed in my life, it's been a long walk to peel back all this. My relationship's been restored with God, and the steps He has shown me is patient to continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I hope that what I've said today will touch your heart. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will open your hearts and minds, that He'll allow you to see in your heart those things which are separating you from the fullness of His grace. I pray, Father, that all those who hear the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus, Lord, would, would turn unto you, not for an instantaneous, everything is all fixed, Father, to develop a relationship and come to know you and come to know the truth as you have laid it before us. And, Father, I wish to speak your fullness in the name of Christ Jesus over each and every one of them that you would rebuke the devourer for their sake, that you would open their hearts and minds, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. And I ask, Father, that you would continue this good work in which you've started in each and every one. In the name of Yeshua Messiah, I thank you, Father Yahweh. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, until I see you next time, Please be meditating. Please be reading your big book. Please be praying. Please seek out when you have that desire to use, when you have that desire to go beat something, when you have that desire to just get right back into your own way of life. Reach out to somebody. Go to a meeting. Go to a Bible study. If you can't do any of that, you can email me at rmccartney at freedministries.com. I'm more than willing to talk to you. I'm more than willing to listen. And I'm more than willing to share the love of Christ in your life. And sow that seed of Christ. Until next time, brothers and sisters, Shalom and Yeshua Messiah.